Hello everyone and welcome to uh, Lost Caverns of Ixlan Raft. Alright. Throne of the Grim Captain. Now what it is, it is a kind of a build around you. Probably probably want to peek early in the draft to be able to draft around it. Now this is the kind of a I don't know if it if it fun is the correct one because you can have some miserable games when you try to build a deck around it, but don't quite get there. It could be a train wreck draft and uh, and a kind of a boring deck to play. But of course, if you can make it work, it would be quite cool to you know try to get the Grim Captain down. But you would have to draw this card, and your deck otherwise might be bad. I I think I'll just take the best card in the pack instead. Maybe it's a bit boring, but Cabarrock is unborn is just so good. Uh, even if I'm not red white, I can try to splash it if I'm white or red. And uh, I think that is that correct pick. I'm still trying to win these drafts. I will, you know, want to make the fun picks whenever possible. Uh, but when there is a, a card that is clearly going to be able to uh, um, make it in, I mean, if I can play this in my final deck, uh, it's going to be so strong that uh, it's more fun to win matches than, than, you know, do some dirtling around and not necessarily with very good success. Uh, Alright, this pack has like a diamond pickaxe and the Zoyoba which I'm looking at. I think I would take it, take the pickaxe over the Wizage and the Zoyoba definitely over the Wizage. Um, yeah, it is going to be one of them. Now the thing is that um, while I like the pickaxe a lot, the Zoyoba is just a really good card. And I can be like black red splashing for the sunborn. I think I should take the better card here now, this early in the draft. There's no guarantee I'm gonna be white red, but I mean even if I am red black, just like I said, I can splash the steal the cover of the sunborn. So I'll take the better card. Alright, so now I have a white card as a two drop. And a red two drop. There's a promising vein if I want to, you know, do some splashing, but I would not pick a promising vein. Pack one, pick three. It's not going to be that important. So I think the decision now from this pack is between the Aspirant and the Wendercliff. Aspirant would work better in the red white deck. This of course works in there too, but I think I like this slightly more. But since there's a chance I will be black red also, I'll take the Wendercliff because it does in fact, you know, share a color with both of these early picks here. There's a Bartolome, alright. I'm not taking that. Um, so no really a white card of interest in here. There's a Wizards of Dread uh, as well as the Echo of Dusk. You could take a red card, the Panicked Altisor, but it's a little early for a 5 drop. I don't like the burnings on the Cavalry outside red green. Because it's too often just gonna be a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, which is not great. Um, I think the decision here is between the Echo of Dusk and the Wizards of Dread. Do I want to have the kind of a slow 2 for 1 or the pretty decent 2 drop? But I think I'll take the Wizards. Oh, another Zoyova now. Well, and and there's a white card too, but because I have already picked the Zoyova, I'm gonna just follow with that. Route. So I'm trying to now find a way to splash the cover of the sunbone, and I will take this two good two drop over the good four drop. Yep. And here I have a sunset militia, primordial nover, conservator, volcano, panic delt. Now I mean the red cards are all fine. I don't think I want to have the conservator here. Um, should I take the 2 drop? 5 drop? 6 drop? Hidden Volcano is actually an option too. I have a 3 2 drops here already. I actually could take the Hidden Volcano. I'm taking it actually. Yep. It's a straight upgrade to a deck. Usually when it's the first cave. I do like to have a decks that have at least 2 of these, you know, Discover Caves. As opposed to a deck that does have only basic lands as its mana base. Alright, so there's a Fungal Fortitude, there's a Rampage and Spike Tail. I quite like the Fortitude with uh, quality 2 drops like the Zoyova. I don't really need the plus 2 plus 0 there so much because it has death touch. 
but oh there's also oh actually sorry 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 I was I should take the captivating cave because yeah this can help me cast the cover of the sunbone it will be a turn five play but it's still a good card at five mana because if you have to make white mana with this land you of course have to pay an extra mana in that case but it's totally fine with the sunbone okay dead weight the only <laughs> reasonable choice here so let's take that um yeah I should not forget I'm, I'm still trying to splash this it's just a such a good card. Now you could take like the mischievous pop which I think I would take over the Anwar here if I really wanted to consider still being red white but I think with double Zoyova dead weight with it, uh, I'm gonna be black here and I don't like the acolyte at all. I think out of these five mana options I'd rather have the creature. Doesn't, I mean I might just not play this card but there wasn't really that many options left in that pack. And there's a Mephitic draw, which I like mostly in white-black, not much in anything else. Don't think I even have a way to sacrifice it for value. Uh, Daring Discovery is just, um, I don't know, if it doesn't, it's a card I don't think I've played more than like maybe once in the entire set's lifetime. I don't know what kind of deck actually wants to play this, because it's a good effect for aggressive decks, but 5 mana is too much for aggressive decks, I think. Hunter's Blowgun is a card I have played as a main deck card, a raw sideboard card at times. I think it's a fine pick there. Now here though, I mean, I'm not going to splash the Aspirant. What is the chance I'm gonna move to straight to white something here? It's quite low. I don't think I'm going to play the Mephitic Trot either. But I guess it's like a, a larger chance to see with that being played. Okay then, Baritolome here, I'll take it. I'm not gonna be white-black. I mean, maybe I can be, but it's very unlikely. Companion, fine, I guess. It's my first three drop. I guess I could consider playing it. Okay. Anything good in here? Well, there is something good. Not, not like too crazy good stuff, but there isn't a Talis Favor, Grasping Shadows, Vandercliff as a, you know, decent two drop, which I think I would take over the Snail. Um, Mana Curve looks like this. And I, I doubt I'm gonna play both of these, maybe I will play neither of them. Um, but I have to make a pick here. This is not really a mana fixing land, nope. At least not a, a reliable one. I'm deciding maybe between the Favor and the Wonder Cliff. I think my evaluation of the Grasping Shadows has gone down a bit. Uh, it can be a little bit clumsy at times. So should I just take the creature? I think I take the Etalis Favor because I have these Zoyavas for instance which are very good hits. So I want to have more options, more, more ways to you know actually get to find them. Alright, that's, that's a really good green pack, there's like a, the Paleontologist and then the Poison Dart Frog, also the Axe Joy is quite nice green card, but well I'm not taking any of them. For me the choice is between like a so-called Wiper and a Dread Weight number two, and I think I'll take a Dead Weight here. It's also pretty good removal with the Zoyama because you get to kill something small from the opponent and also get the uh, Descent uh, trigger for the Zoyama. So yeah, also there's a Captain Storm, but of course I'm not blue, so let that be there. Mm, yeah, more good <laughs> blue stuff going. Scout, Wrestler, Pirate Chat. I also have seen many of these Altec Cloud Guards. All right, so now there's actually, I mean, for me, there's a, there's, it's between two cards. It's a Sunfire Torch, which is a fine removal spell. Also triggers the Zoyova, but there's also a Captivating K, which I think I could play as a second copy just to make this thing work. I don't want to play too many of these. It's quite hard to play a turn to Zoyoba, for example, with these because this only produces colorless. Maybe one is enough now. I'll take the torch. But it's a little bit of a redundancy maybe with all these cheap card removal spells, but um there's there's a lot of decks in this format that have mostly creatures that you know die to these effects anyway, so it's it's fine to have them. I would take the compass gnome, of course, thanks to the Sunborn here, but upgrade is too good to pass up, so let's take the upgrade. And, and, and... Wiper versus Sunshot Militia. Now the thing about Wiper is that if I don't play like the Nover... Hmm... It's not gonna get too many good things back. I can like, um, <laughs> discard the... 
sun bone or it or I can cast that in it and it dies then I can bring it back but I suppose it's early in the draft I mean there's a militia the other option but I, I think I don't care about the militia now that much I'll take the wiper because I don't have that many tree drops and I can still find like those land cyclers which are of course fantastic with the wiper and I might play like a nobera two in the deck too there's a land cycler right here, and it's an easy pick. But now that I took the soul call wiper, let's do it. Also, land cyclers do trigger the uh, descent of these things. All right, plundering pirate gives me white mana in the form of the treasure for the cabaret is unborn, making it an easy pick here. I'm a bit low on uh, color fixing, but so I should definitely pri prioritize this, and I'm not losing much like the Commander Cliff or the Hidden Volcano. Amelia, Amelia, okay, I don't think that card is... <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to splash it for sure. It's not that easy to gain life in this set. I'm thinking about it mostly to pick 20 gems from a pack that has cards I'm not that interested in. I don't think the Mikoid is that good. It, it trades too often with cheaper cards thanks to only having three toughness, and the 1-1 one, one tokens aren't even that amazing, so I'll take this just to have a 20 gems, not because I'm wanting to play that card. Another companion... I think one is like the amount I'm happy playing, I don't like these too much. 3 mana 2-1, yes the map token is worth something, but just compare this to the blue 3 drop flyer that has... I'm, I'm taking this way, by the way, you know, maybe I sideboard it in, I rarely do, but... Anyway, the 2-2 the two, two flyer that gives you a map token versus 2-1 ground guy. Yeah, it doesn't have color requirements, but it's such a weird thing to have both in the same set. And this is so much worse than the flyer. Of course, the flyer is really good. All right, I think I'll take the necromage here. And gnome versus... Uh, well, I'm not playing the gnome, so I'll take the uncommon for world value. I really don't like the gnome at all. Still get a skull cap snail here. Cockwork wrestler is also in the pack, but not my not in my colors. Alright, just the equipment. Daring discovery and even the fortitude. Uh, I don't know yet if I'm gonna play it, but let's put it in the deck. I sadly didn't get a um, back the two one land fetching thing, but I have now a scampering surveyor and I think it's it's an easy peek from this pack. I suppose the second option would be the Ancestors Aid, which can also create me the treasure token for the a cap rock to you, but yeah, in easy scampering surveyor. The spring loaded saw blades might even be splashable, although I have very few artifacts, so crafting this into the vehicle is not necessarily gonna always happen, so yeah. Anyway, the peak is going to be a server regardless. Yep. And maybe like one way to fix my mana and I would be somewhat happy. Instead I get a pretty weak pack 2, a pick 2 in this pack 3. Wow, I don't like any of these. I might actually take something like the Child of the Volcano because I can have the, some of those triggers happen. You know, with the dead weights, the Sunfire Torch and whatnot. But I mean, there's like a, another copy of a Skull Cap Snail. I don't think it's that great. I have only two caves for now, although this thing fetches a cave. So the Gargantuan leads is maybe even worth considering. I think I like it more than the Child of the Volcano. So if I get a get few more caves, I can even play this just main deck straight up. Well, this should be an easy pick. Deep Cabin Bat is an amazingly good card, so let's take that. And, yep. I don't even care about the idol too much because I have a double dead weight and a sunfire torch for a small creature removal. And another spike tail would, of course, still make the soul coil wiper slightly better, but I don't like to blame too many of these land cyclers. Of course, there's no question about what to pick. The bat is the pick. I was just considering what would be pickable in that pack if there wasn't if the bat wasn't there. Alright, expensive creature removal or just a scallywag that can get me white. I don't like the buried treasure for splashing because you kind of can't use the card unless you draw your splash card. So you, you don't get the value from this uh, until later. So I would just take the scallywag here. I can cut something like maybe a skull cap snail. Oh, all well, this pack is... <laughs> 
has like multiple cards I would be happy running, even the Deep uh, Goblin Skull Taker. Promising Wayne definitely just to make a splash happen, also works with the leads and also works with the Descent, but there's a soul, Souls of the Lost. It's very difficult not to pick this. This can just grow pretty darn large. You have to sometimes, I mean, you have to sack or discard something, but it's not that big of a deal given what you get. Yeah, I'll take this. A third copy of a Zoyova. I wouldn't mind having the Sunbird standard thanks to the mana fixing. I think I won't even take the Plundering Pirate over it, but there's no way I'm, I'm passing any Zoyovas here. It's legendary, but it's so good that it's going to get killed anyway. So I can play multiples. Alright, I'll take the Altisaur, which I like more than the Gnovers here, so let's pick that. <laughs> okay, well, I can play for Zeobas, why not? Why not? There is some kind of an upper limit to how many two of legendary creatures you would play, but I think the limit is more than four. Alright, so Ancestor's Age, one more way to get white mana. I will play the Kabarak the Sunbone. Just like in my previous deck where I think I splashed it. Okay, there's now this thing. And I'm not playing any of these, although the Tectonic Hazard is a sideboard card I sometimes end up using. I have already two of these, I'm not needing a third one, so I'll take the Uncommon. And a few more cards. Uh, I don't like the McCoy, the Freebooter, I guess gives you a treasure token, but I have I, I won't have space for this thing in my deck. I have too many ways things to cut anyway. And, 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 well I got the Gnome, which I still won't be playing. And one more card. And that's gonna be a Mephitic draw, which I won't be playing either. Hmm, I don't have enough caves for the leech. I will cut at least one over. Not sure about the Child of the Volcano yet. I have a lot of two drops, I don't need to play all of them. I think I don't care about the skull cap snail that much. I don't need the Fungal Fortitude. Let's check out the creature curve. Come on. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, excellent. Not the visage. It's not a turn two creature. It can become one later on. Four, five, six, seven, eight creatures. I don't think I need eight, so I'm gonna cut the Vandercliff, which I you know care about the least out of these options. Now this is twenty-four cards. Uh Atalis Favor Pondering Pirate Necromage. Uh, I suppose I play the wall soul coil wiper here. I'm happy to return anything that costs, you know, five or more mana. And then in case of some very good creatures, of course, like the Cabarok, the Sunbone, I'm happy to return it. Even the Zoyava might be worth returning. I suppose I'm playing the companion here. Seventeen seven. So I have a removal, but it's mostly for small creatures. Mm, a little bit of hand hate here. Upgrade also works against small creatures. Mm, Ethalis favor should be fine. Yep, I do think this is the main deck build. I might have some kind of sideboard options here, but I like this as the main deck uh, choice. And um, let's see the amount of mana fixing for white. Surveyor, Plundering Pirate, and Ancestor's Age. That's like three ways to get the white mana. Then there's the Captivating K, which is a fourth one. And of course, I will have to play a Plains because of the Surveyor, so that's five. Mm. That definitely is enough, and I will be playing the Sunbone here. But yeah, I think 16 lands is fine with the Spike Tail. I have a lot of early drops here. Yeah, I can play 16 lands here, I would say. I have basically two 5 drops and three 4 drops. That's 5 cards that require me to have more than 3 lands. Because I, will, I can always just swamp cycle this thing. I think this is enough. Also, you know, the pirate and the aid, and maybe even the scallywag sometimes, you know, get me treasures to be able to cast these things. So I think 16 lands is totally reasonable, despite the fact I'm going to need to play a basic planes in this red black deck. But I have some fixing here, so this is fine.
volcano captivating cave that's actually good two good value cards to pick with the server even if i don't need the land for anything like i have a lot of lands in my hand when i play this i can at least get lands that you know can give me some value so that's nice uh, one planes and i suppose now i have the same number of swamps and bread mana although this actually is a, is a black source i don't have any double casters well, not counting the six drop version of the spike tail. Mm. Well, I have a very even amount of red and black. So I guess if I just add six of each, then that's like um, land-wise it's the same. But thanks to the spike tail, I have an extra way to get a swamp. Yeah, it's only seven red mana for turn two plays. Of course, the captivating cave will contribute to to red two drops on turn three, but I think the cave is still worth having because of the extra way to be able to cast this, and of course, also I can I can fetch it with the surveyor to decide to get the counters on something. But yeah, I don't like usually running only seven ways to cast my two drops, and I have here, you know five creatures that require that cost two and require red and the upgrade might be something i could be interested in casting on turn two but i suppose i have a, a similar amount of black cards in here so if i would swap one swamp into a mountain that wouldn't really help so this will be the deck the main deck at least Mm, three drop, four drop on the draw, but I have all the mana. I don't even need this to fetch the planes. They mulligan. I'm on keeping this uh, with just having the companion, but I have what? Do I have seven two drops? I think it was seven in the end. And of course, I have the dead weight twice. I have, I have, and I have an upgrade. I, I should have a lot of ways to, you know, at least if I don't draw a creature, at least to interact with the early place but but I guess I have only two draw steps to find one so let's see if they get the free attack there they do um, I'm not gonna use the spike tail I have a five mana here already so I don't need to fetch a swamp and this will get me the sixth land regardless yeah this is what I was uh, kind of uh, worried about because they have a sunfire torch here my companion yeah but th that's what you get when you'd are on the draw and don't have a two drop. This is just a classic limited, and that's why I have what seven two drops in the deck, two dead weights. But I don't think the starting hand was still a mulligan there, because I didn't know the opponent is gonna curve out with a four power three drop. So this is bad news, of course, because they can just kill my guys. I'm gonna take at least four or six here, going down to twelve. But it is what it is. At least the server will be able to, you know, uh, block the raptor. I just hope they don't have more removal. But I suppose I do have a kind of a game plan here. Turn four, server turn five. I can have either the spike tail or the cabarok this unborn because this will of course ramp me as well. Oh, they did not equip the torch, which means they have like a, a the first strike trick. But I think I'm happier. They this card it an upgrade what is going on why would they discard an upgrade their, their hand must be sick they discarded the one drop upgrade okay why okay. I, I don't understand what's going on why would they let me block anyway <laughs> whatever mm. I guess I'm gonna play this they might have a, a, you know, the, the two drop that makes me exile a card from my hand. And since I don't really need the mountain anymore, I should play this utility land. Now the server will be killed by the torch, but I think... I mean, I'm still doing the most mana efficient play here. I can still get the planes now that uh, I, I have both my utility lands here already. Hmm... Um, I mean, I will go to 8 if they now actually do equip the torch, which they definitely should. But then I have a 5-6, which I hope they can't 
deal with. They have been able to discard cards to draw stuff, but they have discarded like an upgrade. I, I don't think it's that likely that they can get a better card than an upgrade. But still, that, that's the decisions, decision they made. And now a removal spell again. I know it's a one that they don't necessarily have mana for, but it's quite weird here. Anyway, let's play the 6-5. Uh, sorry, the 5-6. Try to just have a blocker around. I mean, if they have now like land drop, they are missing the ray of rune. I guess they have another one. Okay, they had a geological appraiser with another torch. Now that thing can go to your face too. But I don't think they're gonna attack with, you know, by sac and sacrifice the raptor here. But who knows? I wouldn't mind if they sacrifice their raptor now. Okay, Zoyova and Kaparok the sun bonus. So I have a total of 7 mana. Can I play? No. Actually, I don't need to play Zoyova. I should play this Necromage and... Unless I want to do this now... Let's, let's play the most expensive cards. Now oh, they can use the torch to get rid of the necromage, but I don't think I care. I can then tap those two one ones for the Kabaroktis ability. And I'm happy if the Kabarokti trades with the Raptor, that's no big deal. And of course if they do attack with the Wandercliff, that means I'm going to just be able to block it for free. Does that go to my face? I really hope it doesn't. Okay, they killed the Necromage, but they're gonna lose now the Wandercliff. I'm of course gonna block with the Spike Tail. They could have plus two, plus two and first strike, but if I block with the Spike Tail, that's not gonna happen. Okay, well, I mean, I'm not attacking with these, and these can't block, so this is an easy attack now. I can make this into a 6-6, six, six, you know, which means, means that they will either have to let this do its thing another time. Or double block to kill it. But I think I'm happy enough to just do it once and trade with Raptor. I can play the Pirate and the Zoyava post-combat. That that does actually seem that it, that it makes sense. I guess I could have... Yeah, map tokened first. Yeah, this being a 5-5 five five would have been the best. I made a mistake. Well, Italy's favor. This actually works very nice, nicely. It's a 5-5 five five now. Well, let's play this. Let's see what they have. Not a creature because they would have played it. Okay, but I can make that into a 5-4 uh, minus guy. And now I'll just play my stuff. Let's actually now. Well, actually, I'll just. Uh, I don't know yet about the map token. Is there a reason to uh, crack it now? There is no reason to crack it now. So I don't think I will do that. I know if I see a permanent and mill it, I will get to trigger this, uh, uh, this descent, but... I think I'm now <laughs> pretty easily winning this game and they don't even want to continue. Understandably, I'm gonna get another value play from the Sunborn. I'm gonna be able to make this into a 5-4. I have a board state that can keep their board from attacking and I'm winning in a couple of turns with my damage dealers. I mean, unless they start blocking and once they start blocking, I will just, you know, because I have more resources here, I will win the game if they start trading the resources. Alright, so black red. I don't know what was up with their decisions to discard the removal spells here, but I'm happy they did. Sunfire Torch is... nothing really... that makes me want to... you know, change things around. I suppose the Fungal Fortitude can be relevant. It can't save a creature from getting exiled, though, but they have a bunch of removal, so I could have like a sort of a cheap counter spell on their removal. But then again, their removal is very cheap too. 
But I guess you could consider it, it as a cheap way to bring back the creature that was being targeted. But given that I have a fairly low mana cost creatures, the Fungal Fortitude isn't really going to bring back anything massive that often. And I don't really want to cut anything. The Companion is the worst of these cards, but um, another Vandercliff maybe. Nah, this is fine. Let's use the same deck. I don't really need another two drop. I have so many of the two drops. Well, the opponent mulligans, but I should do. I have no way to get the black mana here, and this hand doesn't do anything without it. So let's go to six, both of us. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep this one now because. Not going to be going. I mean, going to five is always quite quite miserable. Now, basically, I need to draw one of my lands that produce black or the spike or the what's the land cycler that get gets swamps. And here, I think I like to close this thing. If I draw a black one, I'm just happy to play the Zoyova and then the rest of this stuff. Okay, well that is. Uh, black mana, uh, a slow black mana, but it is black mana regardless. That allows me to play Zoyova at three lands, although I would probably start with... Well, uh, just forget it. <laughs> I can, I did draw that. Okay, no upgrade there. This has Death Touch, so basically the Torch, you know, works very well with Death Touch. If they would have had any creature, I would have been able to kill it with the Torch. Okay, well... I guess I care about that they don't now they of course did mulligan to six and had to maybe keep a not so great hand. But this works very very well for me now of course. Side claw raptor. Well I actually don't mind trading. I know I could use the torch now. But if they just block oh that's actually now, if they don't block, they just use their thoughts to kill my Zoyova. So, the, the thing I'm thinking about that, that I would actually prefer to play the Child of the Volcano this turn, but I suppose I can just attack his favor and then use the torch. And I should probably favor the companion here. Okay, that was a pretty good one. Join the dead, and the rest of them are lands. Well, that's pretty sweet. Now they are, of course, going to pretty much be in a bad shape because I will sack this, and the creature will deal the damage. So two damage is death. That's two damage, and this will die. Also, that will trigger the Zoyovas thing. So they take three damage or discard a card. They, and they have two redundant swamps. Okay. Maybe they just drew a land there. It's very difficult to win against this kind of start now that they had basically nothing in the early game. That is what I call a great hand. Replacement the Zoyova, then dead way to keep triggering the Zoyovas. And if they don't have a blocker, I can even play now the card, the Graphic Companion, which I would play rather than the Wizards of the Dread. Wizards of Dread, not the. <laughs> Alright. That is dead, which is fine. I'll just play the 3 drop here now. I read. Um, yeah, I can show you about that did. Well, if they block it, that's even better, but I doubt they're gonna block that. Dead weight, and then this thing doesn't have to be on the battlefield, too. It only checks on in the end step if, if they lost the. If, if, I, if a permanent went to my graveyard or not. 
Alright, they took the three, understandably. Because I'm not really pressuring them too much yet. There's another pirate which I will get rid of. Using the Sunfire Torch. If I draw a land, I can even... Okay, well, that's maybe different now. If this gets a... It gets a counter. Okay, Thunder Hulk. And they uh, do, in fact, have a treasure here. But they can't cast it on the next turn. Because even if they have a land drop, that would only be six. And I can use the Wizards of Dread to make them discard it. Uh, but now the thing, of course, is that... Uh, Zoyaba will trade here. I can kill the Scout using the Sunfire Torch. I'm thinking if I'm supposed to use this pre-combat. They are gonna trade with the Zoyaba, right? If they trade with the Companion, that's great for me. So, I just to be more efficient, I'm gonna do this. Maybe it picks up a counter and then I can deal additional point. That wasn't the case. I can play my tapped land. I won't be playing the Altisar on the next turn. Unless they miss a land drop. In that case, it's different. Okay, but let's do this again. The Death Touch Torch thing doing its thing. Take action. Kill this thing. And they are gonna... I know there was like a play when I just equip on the companion, make it a 3-1 and attack. Then if they block and trade, the Zoyaba trigger will happen, but I think it was better to just clear the board here. Now if they... Let's see if they have a land drop after this. They do, so now I have to be very careful about not dying. I don't like the fact they have the Iceberg Titan, but I suppose it is what it is. I'm gonna attack because I'm not gonna use the Ancestor's Aid on their turn. Because then of course I would take 4 damage from this thing. So I still have to deal with the Iceberg. I don't know how easy that's gonna be, but I have to make them discard now then. I'll make them discard them. I mean the card that would be even more difficult to deal with. They have an Ancestors 82. Yeah, well, it's gonna be a little bit of a stalemate. Okay, they chose for some reason to actually... I think that was a mistake. They could have just crafted with the treasure token using an artifact in the graveyard to make the 6-6 happen. Now that's not happening. I can trade the companion with the 8, no big deal. And I have a 5-4 here. I mean, that was a crucial tempo loss for them. For sure. They even let this trade happen, which is great for me. Because now they have to use their entire turn to make the 6-6. Six, six. I could even have my 5-4 here, actually. That might even be better. Because it can attack past this guy. I have two creatures here, obviously. I will crack my treasure, but I can do that. This has a menace, that's a big deal. Um, do I care about milling too? I really don't think there's any benefit doing so. I might even mill my white mana source and then draw the... Yeah, I suppose that my, I don't really care about descent count. I care about descending and mostly the Zoyavas do. But now they're actually gonna go to 8. Now this has like a pseudo vigilance. They can attack and choose to untap it. So uh, it can attack and still still hold back the panicked Altisor. But I do have the menace creature here. I also have the souls of the lost which will be a nice pickup. Oh, this has fathomless descent. I, I actually forgot this thing. Yeah, I should mill now because that's gonna make that guy larger. by a significant margin. And I can just, you know, sack a land. This is, as an additional cost, discard a card or sacrifice a permanent, including lands. Now they will, of course, have a possibility to get another 
blocker, but that depends on... Okay, sadly they do have mana for the Ancestors 8 here. Well, they don't have it anymore. Because you know what's really good? <laughs> the fact I can make this into 6 power and the double block with the Iceberg Titan won't be that great anymore. So the Etali's favor here doing some pretty nice work now. Well, let's have one of our Zoyavas here around two, and I can trigger even the descent using this Souls of the Lost sacking a land here. I, I think I will keep the planes because I might need it. Anyhow, this is a really... Oh, I'm gonna mill two, so that's going to already take care of the descent most likely. And they have to actually block with two creatures now. And if, they, if I can trade with the Titan, that's fantastic. Lost on upgrade, but I milled a land, so Zoyova trigger is a go. They have to either sacrifice both of their flyers, because this has menace. It also, by the way, has trample. Um, otherwise, they have to use the Iceberg Titan, and then, of course, this is pretty much of a game loss. I mean, they will not have an easy way here. Um, I will play my massive thing, of course. And I'll play the land, sack a... Um, Mountain. Oh, I have a double. Uh, the, the land cycler dino is a double caster black, so let's do this. So I have a 9 10. They have to sack some permanents. I don't think they're gonna take 3 damage because I have the Altisar also going on. I really like the Altisar. It's a very nice, very nice arm. 5 drop common. The reeds and all. 4-5 is a great blocking stats, especially for a reach creature, and then you can de keep dealing the damage with the tap ability. Yep, that's really not gonna help against the Souls of the Lost here. And now I know they have only one card in hand, which I know about. They cannot attack. Can I crack the volcano? Might as well do it right now. No harm there. Uh, put in in my hand. I have <laughs> I have now get access to all my four zoyovas. One in the graveyard, one in exile, one in hand, and one on the battlefield. Sweet. Um, no reason to attack with the altisaur. I have. Probably no reason to attack with Zoyova 2 because I can't cast this. I'd rather let the trigger happen. So they will jump block the Souls of the Lost. They will have to. And then they will have to sacrifice a um, land or discard the trick they have. None of them. I'll take three, but that's pretty horrible because of the Altisaur is going to already put them down to four. So taking three is probably out of question. Okay, blue, red. Um, Iceberg, Thunder Hulk. They have a couple of plundering pirates at least, so they have ways to, you know, kind of ramp into this thing. It's a pretty awkward thing to try to deal with. Uh, that might be a reason to play the Skull Cap Snail, so they have to exile. I mean, if they exile a, ha a land from their hand, that keeps them away from the Hulk a little bit better. They also have, by the way, the Oaken Siren, which will tap mana for the Thunder Hulk. Not quite sure if I should play the 1-1 one, one here. What would be the cut if I choose to do that? I like my one of Ancestors 8, mostly to get mana for the Sunborn. I guess the Companion is the least useful card in here. So I'm gonna cut the companion. I will play the Skull Cap Snail. Uh, Tectonic Hazard I don't think is gonna find good targets. I suppose it's not that bad when they tap out for this, but uh, that's like the only th use for it. I'm not gonna play the Tectonic Hazard here. Is there a reason to go with a lower kind of a mana curve cut the Gnover and 
to something else? I don't really think so. Is the blowgun gonna do something? They had some flyers though. I mean, I guess against blue red the Nova isn't the greatest. It's gonna just trade with some two drop. Or they have a cheap removal for it. Yes, I get the discover three, but it's still a five mana that I have to invest into it. So I, I, I'm actually going to take the blowgun here. I can have some blockers for the Air Force that I saw there. That's it. Unfortunately, this is not the keepable hand despite having these good two drops. I need more than one land. Mm, okay, that's easy keep and it's all his favor. I mean, against this blue red deck, the dead weights will be good. I will not risk with their favor. They might even respond to it with some instant speed effect. So that's that. Blowgun. I'm still going to play the tap land now. There's no, re no, there's no hurry to cast the blowgun. Mm, yeah, I can snail it away. Don't they have access to blue mana or they just... Start. Okay, they actually... Yeah, they don't have blue mana because they could have played the iceberg if they had blue mana. They're not gonna upgrade this guy. No, they're gonna get the treasure. Well, I mean, this trading into a treasure is totally fine for me. I guess they have a, like a... Well, more something like that, which is fine. Um, Just play the... I know I can deadweight that, but I can do it later on. Let's use mana optimally and play the necromage in here and if they attack I think I'm not going to block because I have two dead weights I might want to use this second I'm at least one of them on this pirate so point is that I can oh well that is um I need to double dead weight that it's just how it gonna how it's gonna go which means I'm not gonna dead weight this guy I have two black mana, gladly. So, that's that. I still attack for three damage, it's not the worst. But yeah, this is just... Uh, it's first strike. I mean, it's not first strike when attacking, it's first strike always. It's really... I mean, just uh, having a... 3-3 um, a three, three first strike for three, even without any other abilities, would be a great card in Limited. But of course, it being a rare gives it even more utility. Blade Master. Alright, well, I get to do this thing. And then I have this blowgun, which I side put it in, allowing me to keep attacking. Okay, well, upgrade. They have to find another removal for the bat. That bat getting a removal spell is so sweet. Mm, let's attack with this guy. Death Touch on my turn. Mm, I'll, I'll keep the land in my hand. They don't play black, so I don't have to, you know, discard or, or exile this. They are now at four lands, one treasure, so it's still two mana sources to get get the um, Thunder Hulk going. Okay, I get my utility land from this, the one that I can sack. Although it will be my own only white source now, but let's just attack here now. For three. Then I am gonna get my captivating cave. I'm not sure if I'm going to actually use it yet. I mean, I probably will just use the hidden volcano. Uh, well, that's a little different now. I can, of course, take this damage. Are they going to use their... Yeah, they are. So if this becomes a... Okay, well... Siren there. Uh, Siren is tapping, mana, tapping for the Thunder Hulk. Okay, well, first of all, I can just make the bat into a 3 3. And I think I should, because I can move the equipment around, but that would still allow them to trade. And then when they play this thing on the next turn, I can actually make it into a 4 4, and they still don't have a good attack. Another option is to consider attacking with the Surveyor. 
I mean, I don't have to attack with the bat. That's also, you know, quite true. But it is a little tempting. Hmm, there are many decisions here. I'm gonna play the land regardless. There's the hidden volcano I could crack. There's nothing, no Zoyova, so no, no decent triggers benefiting from sucking my lands here. I, I actually do think I'm gonna just go for this play. This allows me to attack with the bat. And of course that attack with the death toucher. So this is five damage unless they make a you know block that I'm happy if they would be making. But now they go down to seven. And they can play the Oaken Siren, but uh, I can enhance the bat. So they have to actually either jump block or go to Okay, is it time to trade with the Blade Master here? I would lose both the snail and the surveyor. I'm, I'm gonna take four here. I might find something for the Zipfrex sentry. This is a Yoba. So now I'm just gonna um, just attack with the four power bat. And uh, they're gonna either go the three or jump block. And then I can play. There's no decent trigger right now, so I'm gonna play the pirate. And now, of course, they have to also watch out for the for my board state here. I mean, okay, now they can actually cast the Thunderhawk. They can attack with the flyer first, but now they will... So on the ground, they have things cleared, but they also have to jump lock with the Water Wind Scout. So they need an answer for the bat, and of course, the Altisaur is going to be rather nice. So now I can attack with everything, but thanks to the Thunderhawk, it's not really doing much. Um, I guess I could have moved... No, I'm gonna play the Altisar, so I don't have mana to move around the equipment here. And this, of course, has lifelink, so that's pretty sweet as well. So I don't even lose to this guy right now. And they have to top deck an answer for the bat. And then they have to top deck an answer for the Altisar, because even though this can be quite good clock, I do have enough blocks on it, and uh, it doesn't have trample. Yep, Plundering Pirate won't help. They will have to block with the Oak Siren, and um, they are gonna lose to the Altisar too, so they need to find, on the next turn, they need to find an answer for both the Bat and the Altisar, and they are top decking. They didn't... Oh, I had this thing as reach, of course, so they couldn't even attack with the Altisaur. Um, I can now move around the equipment, but does it even make too much sense? It makes some sense, because I don't need the mana for anything else. A three power bat is gonna be lethal regardless, so let's just uh, move this here, so they do have to trade with the, one of the tokens now, of course. I could even attack with... I mean, I do want to trigger a Zoyova, so I'm gonna attack with the Skullcap Snail. Is that kind of not needed though? They would have to sack a land, or actually a treasure token. Because they will have to block this, they can't go to two, because the Altisar would be finishing them off. Now, I do have blockers on here, I think, and I will go to 24. I do think this makes sense. I make them sack this, so they have even less mana to do stuff. Yeah, this is fine. It actually chose to block with the 1-1 one, one and not the 2-3, eat it for free. Well, let's do this and let's equip on the pirate, for instance. I don't think with five mana and one top deck they can <laughs> uh, get an answer 
No, no, there's no way that there's any card in this format. A mass removal effect doesn't exist in these colors with this amount of mana. That would help them. I can also just, you know, block the threefold Thunder Hulk with my Death Toucher, which I think I will just for fun. Trade here. They got the five tokens, but who cares? They are gonna die very soon. The Altisar and the Bat. More of these guys. No life gain for these colors. Alright. And this bat again proved its worthiness. You know, I, I could I, I ate an upgrade and then had this useful attacker for the entire game. They never drew an, an answer for the bat, so the upgrade was kind of a good. This is just a very good two drop, and that's also the reason why this card sees play in standard constructed at least. I don't know about the other formats if if it's quite good enough for them. I guess it can be also played in alchemy. On the play, well, I had one lander, but how about the zero lander? <laughs> yeah, let's go to six. Uh, I have a rampage against Spike Tail, and um, this fairly decent uh, curve here. I mean, just going to five is annoying. If this hand can draw one land like immediately, this can easily battle an, with an, uh, like a normal game of magic. I'm gonna keep this one lander. Um, of course, the nowhere is gonna go away. Come on, just one land. Ideally, untapped. I, mean, I have one Ender's tapped land in the deck, but even that would be fine. Yeah, okay. And they start with a one drop. I guess the final match in this event as well will be a difficult one. Just like in the previous draft. Yeah, that's not that good. I. I guess I'm playing this Zoyaba first. I have a backup. It prevents the Aspirant from attacking, but I also do like the Life Linker here. Mm. Okay, they get rid of the Zoyaba, which is understandable. They get this cry from this thing. Do they have a 2 drop to follow? Yeah, they do. Yeah, this is the kind of matchup where you can't really afford losing, missing your second land drop. But, oh well. Mm. Well, I don't know if I want to trade with the Vandercliff. Let's see what they have in their hand at least. Is this gonna be some miserable stuff? Well, there's that. They have nothing else, but they uh, the Vandercliff is pretty annoyingly, annoyingly able to, you know, uh, trade these planes into something better. Double Reliquary, huh? Well, I take six here. They, they had by, by quite a good top deck, by the way. Hasty 2-2, two, two, and then of course they can... Yeah. Well... Um, let's see. They are top decking, but they have this Wander Cliff, of course. Mm. I guess I just have to use the Ancestor's Aid here. I mean, I could play the pirate, but it's not even that good. I will get rid of the ruin lurker bat in here. Okay, they did not discard that. I do hope it's not a trick. <laughs> That's well, it is. Does seem like they are. They are, you know, passing priorities automatically. But they are going to have a post combat play. They would have discarded this card otherwise. I suppose it's just a plundering pirate, but of course the problem here is that I'm at the quite low life total. Now that said, I will get one life per turn and I can actually play the cover rock, the sunburn, sun be, sunborn now. Um, I'm just figuring out if that's the better play or should I just play the Zoyawa and the plundering pirate? I'm gonna attack for one, I will go to nine. Now the thing is that this actually holds down everything here. So let's say they actually don't draw anything relevant. I attack, go to nine. They attack with everything. I block the three, two, and I take five going down to four. 
and I ate one of their guys for free. I am gonna need to get a little lucky here, so that's what I'm gonna do here. I don't know if I can afford to tap stuff for the discover easily. I suppose I can because I have a blundering pirate giving me a treasure that allows me to do that. But let's see what they draw first. I mean, I don't necessarily see it, but I will see based on how they play this turn. Okay, they go for this. Discarding, no discards. That's really bad news. So it might be like a kill spell on the Sunbone here. It's okay, not. They have enough of those pirates. That way is good news. I'm also tempted to, you know, <laughs> just get rid of the Vandercliff because that gives them better draws. But... Now let's be very careful. If I attack with this, I can tap down the bat and the treasure from here to discover three. But it could be like a sunfire torch, which doesn't have immediate impact. Now I can finish off the. I guess I will actually dead weight the Vandercliff because I will then just uh, you know block the pirate anyway, and I get something from the discover. The other option is to not attack with the Sunborn to keep it as a blocker, gain one life here, and just, uh, you know... Do I want to build a board presence though? So if I go to... It is very risky here actually, if they get anything... Uh, I think it's a bit too risky. I'm, I'm gonna do this now. I'm just gonna play the Pirate and the dead weight. On here in particular, so they don't have the rummaging option anymore. And now, maybe on the next turn, I can play the Sunbone. Although, if I draw a land, I might just get three points in the air with Lifelink, which I did. Hmm, I think it's tempting. But the treasure is a very good way to get value from the Sunborner. They can, they can uh, if, uh, let's say they have a land in their hand. That means they actually can't kill this up other than by double blocking. Um, but I have to tap a lot of my stuff. Maybe I don't attack with the... Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to attack with the bat. I'm going to tap down the bat and the treasure here. That gives me a Souls of the Lost. I have to pay the additional cost regardless. So... I think I just will sack a land. That will make this larger. I'm going to pay it. Oh, I should have... Yeah, okay, this is fine. I'm going to... I don't need the planes anymore though. <laughs> I can just discard a card. Because I have the one white card in there already. And now they have an option to double block this guy, which I actually don't mind at all. It gave me a nice amount of value and then I can... That will grow the Souls of the Lost and now... I do need to find another land, of course, to make this thing work, but it's not even that necessary anymore. I'm sure they take three damage here. There's no really... If they actually chose to sacrifice a treasure token, then take three when, while they're at 24. I think I'm... <laughs> given... I mean, uh, given how the, the game started, I'm very happy how this is looking now. So this gives plus two, plus over, and indestructible until end of turn. Well, I'm still gonna get life here. And I will attack, of course, with everything but the Sayova. I'm at 8. And I have a massive board here. They started to draw lands. And now I will just... Uh, yeah. I think I was going to attack with Sayova now, because if, it, if they trade with it, the Souls of the Lost also you know, grows in size, and they are also dying in two turns. Let's say uh, they trade with the Zerva, take take 8, 12, going down to 3. Yeah, well that was, this was the game where I, you know, 
kept a, a six card one lander, missed my second land drop. Opponent started with one drop, two drop, and all that. And you know, thanks to the deep cabin bat, I think, at least partly, I was able to still win that game. Uh, Tectonic Hazard is going to hit fairly few creatures. The rain, the ruin lurker bat, nothing else I saw. But they are now this, you know, they have a lot of three mana three twos and stuff like that. I'm going to now choose to uh, not play the Primordial Nova. That's not the matchup for it. I'm going to play this two drop just to have a blocker on there, guys. I'm not playing the Skullcap Snail here because this doesn't do a good job of blocking things. I don't know if I like the Blowgun too much. I kind of like the Lifelinker, but it's very hard to get this to even like a six drop. I have only two capes and one one way to get them. So it's a little bit too expensive card. The companion, I don't know. I mean, is there anything good in here <laughs> left? I think I, I can still trade with most of the guys with this. So I'm just gonna keep this deck as it is. I mean, I did make one mulligan. No, not mulligan, but sideboarding decision. Okay, a keepable starting hand, and they did mulligan now. Very good stuff. Bat into Vandercliff. Although, if I draw more lands, I might want to play the Vandercliff on turn 2. We'll see. They might have an upgrade for it, though. Well, Aspirant. Hmm, 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 hmm. I didn't draw the land, so I have no reason to now start discarding. I'm gonna see what they have in here. Start my life linker going on and petrify and dusk rose relic very well. I guess well they don't have any more lands in there. They can do the aspirant trick and then sack this for the relic worry. But the petrify is actually not going to work in terms of bringing bringing the card back. So I should actually take this Dusk Cross Relic variant, the Petrify as a removal spell won't help. So let's do that. And if they're gonna make the Bat into a 2-2, that's great target for the dead weight. Yep. I'm very glad they chose to do that. Alright. This seems very good now. I'm not gonna attack into it. They are gonna suspect the Ancestor Shade. I don't want to let, let them know that I have it. So now I can use the Italis favor if they have a... Okay, they have more of those bats. Now I think I am going to uh, attack into that thing and, and use the Ancestor's Aid. And of course I'm going to also discard the mountain here. They might choose to not block, suspecting something. And with that land I have now, uh, I can actually... Yeah, I'm not going to burn my treasure on these three Thermala things, because with one more land I can actually play my 5-6. And I'm in a very good shape here now. They can of course uh, petrify the 5-6, but I think it's fine. Maybe I should offer the something... Are there other things to petrify first? Yeah, let's let's actually do that. I don't need anything. I don't need to care about their board, basically. Let's try to make this into a bigger dead weight. Well, I mean, it does kill most of the stuff I know in their deck. Um, I don't know if I want to. Well, yeah, I will discard a land because. As long as they have the Petrify, I actually don't even plan on playing the Spike Tail. I'm also winning this race, of course, thanks to the Lifelinker. 
And they really don't want to petrify the... They don't want to petrify the bat because, you know, then they never get the dust cross relic very bad. But they have to do it because the race is impossible for them otherwise. Now I can, of course, play the spike tail once I get my land. Mm. Alright. This is interesting because I can get a counter on the child of the volcano if I discard any of these cards. So it's going to be either the Atalis Favor or the Dead Weight. I suppose it's the Dead Weight. There's no good target for it right now. They know about it. And now I can get a 4 4 trample down. I'll just stop play the land because I want to have the spike tail up anyway. If I draw a land on the next turn, then I can, you know, use the Wandercliff here to, you know, make it go away. Okay, there's a Dust Cross Reliquary, which is just gonna be fine. <laughs> Why would they. That makes no sense. I mean. They get their other dust cross really quite back, but they have to sacrifice now something. Why didn't they just take the child of the volcano immediately with this thing? I have no clue. That that's just wasted their two three. But oh well. They can do that. <laughs> okay, it wasn't such a hard matchup after all. I mean at least the game two was pretty easy now. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not gonna discard anything here. No, game is over. Wow, the game one in this final match was really nasty with the start I got and and the start they got. But I just um, I guess the the crucial turn in that game was the one when, first of all, I was able to use my ancestor ancestors aid uh, to you know uh, use my bat to to you know make this into a three power first striker which was able to then kill their was it a three three ruin lurker bat they had enhanced it a couple of times and that they also gave me the treasure token that allowed me to play my cabarok the sunborn which you know was relevant just because of the size four four was able to eat any attackers they had and they start tried to push through but i was able to stabilize that was great <clears throat> All right. Uh, I don't think the Sunborn played really that big of a role. It, it was around a couple of times in the event, but I guess the quadruple Zoyova with a you know pretty good support for uh, this kind of an, a little bit of an aggressive, slightly controlling black red deck with the removal and hand hate. Um, I didn't get to use the so-called wiper at all. I don't think I even cast it in any of the games. But yeah. 2-2 two, two death touch with a positive ability. I always keep saying that. Uh, and why did I get four of these in the draft? I think because black red is considered like one of the weakest color combinations in this um I, in this Lost Caverns of Ixalan draft environment. But, I mean, maybe it is, but this is such a good quality card. I'm not gonna pass an early Zoyova. Just because I want to ignore drafting black and red. I think this really is a good deck now. Mostly because of the quadruple Zoyova. Uh, but I at least allowed myself to, to draft this deck by not ignoring this early in the draft. All right, well, that was that. Um, let's close the... Close. Let's... Let's... St <laughs> how, how, to do, how to say it? I can't talk now. Suddenly I, I'm... Trying to find the words, but... I guess I was just trying to say that. Let's finish the video. All right, that's it. So Thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.